Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's episode we are going to be doing a few little tidy up jobs on the Defender. Some really nice details that we're going to be looking at, but first I'm just going to have my breakfast and then we're going to get stuck in. It's been a while since I've actually been driving the Defender because I've been working on the D3 for so long, uh, trying to get that sorted out. Um, but I've forgotten really how much we've done to this vehicle since buying it. And um, this is the first time really that I've had a chance to sort of put the, the loft spring and the shorter um, slick shift throw into practice. Third, look at that. I mean, it's just, there's no, there's no slop in that at all. That is, that is nice and firm. Uh, I've got a good positive feel on there and I can just pop them straight in. It's so much better, it's so much shorter. Basically, um, I'm really enjoying the shifting on the gear stick. It's so much nicer than before. It's a lot more positive. So there's no sort of not wandering around trying to sort of find that gear. It just seems to be going in really naturally. Um, the loft spring, on the other hand, is taking a little bit more uh, getting used to. It is so different to a standard clutch on a Defender that you really have to sort of be conscious of it straight away because it's very easy just to let it spring up. It's very difficult to get it 100% right, and so you do have to go through that annoying process of getting it wrong before you get it right. I think I've probably got it about 85% how I want it now. Um, it catches sometimes, it's a little bit too low, um, and the pedal originally was way too high because the spring had just thrown it right up. So I've adjusted that, and that's perfect now. Um, and it's just getting that sweet spot to where the, the clutch actually engages. But you can just, I mean, the gear selection is so nice. Um, I really would 100% recommend that sh slick shift. It was so easy to fit and it's made a massive difference uh, in a positive way, it really has. So let me tell you a little bit about what we're gonna be doing today. So we've got a few nice little upgrades. We have got an upgraded uh, windscreen washer jet. Now we're not going for the optimal one, uh, that's a, a major uh, upgrade. We're going for just a standard CNC machined upgrade, um, which should give us a more precise and reliable flow to the windscreen gesture washer jet. We've also got some uh, prototype vent foams. Now these have been sent to us by Exmoor Trim. Uh, they're exploring a few different densities on the foams. So we're going to be fitting and trialing the medium density foam uh, to see if that makes an impact on how much water might be coming through, because I've got a sneaky suspicion that we are still getting water ingress through those vents. And some of you guys have said on the uh, comments that you want to see um, how to actually fit the foam vents. And I'll show you that uh, today, the easiest way of doing it. So, and in combination with the washer jet, because that's a bit of a pain in the ass to do, uh, but we'll cover that as well. So the other thing we're gonna be doing is actually changing our lock channel here on the interior. So the button, the uh, guide, and also the housing in the door card, um, we're gonna be doing that and actually refitting the door card and I'm gonna show you some of the little tricks I use for that. That'll be a nice uh, job to do because we've had no door cards on the Defender for quite a while now. And the last thing we're gonna be doing, oh yeah, so in the last, one of the last episodes on the Defender, we actually put the gear knobs back on and they're okay. I mean, they don't sort of, they're not falling off, but they are loose. Um, and I wanted to put some updated aluminium ones on, but also I wanted to show you a nice little trick on how to um, paint the indentation, the guide, the, uh, the gear position guide on top of it, just to make it stand out a little bit more. It might be something you want to do. Um, it's just a little, a little idea that you can have a look at and see what you think. Okay guys, it's a really nice hot day today, so you have to excuse the uh, cowboy hat, but it's keeping the sun off my face. Ish. Um, so, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be fitting these uh, prototype vent flaps. Now, they're exactly the same as the standard vent flaps that you can buy now. Um, so, the whole fitting procedure is exactly the same. These ones are slightly different to the ones you can currently get on the market where uh, they have a dual density foam. So, they have a thick foam like this, and then they have a shallower. Um, 
more open cell foam that compresses. And I think the idea behind that is so that you get that initial closure on your vent and then it seals, but it's not that effective. And I think what Exmoor Trim are hoping is by using this more advanced um, single piece foam, it will be more effective. So we're gonna give it a go um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, if you haven't seen this particular uh, update on the vehicle, I'll put a link in the description above because we've actually changed and upgraded our vent pins already to these stainless steel ones. So if you wanna know how to fit these, um, check above, uh, go to that video first and have a look and see how to remove the original pins because there's a few uh, little tips on doing that. These should be easy to remove because we've used some anti-seize on them um, and everything else so they should just come off really simply, fingers crossed. So let's give it a go. So on this one, I don't think we're going to be able to get it right out, although we are going to be replacing uh, the washer jet later on today. And we're not doing it just yet, but if you push this, slide this out just enough, you can see that it's now free and have that stayed in place. Now this one's going to come all the way out. There we go. And now we're free. So you're going to want to open your vent flaps fully. Now under here, you can just see there's an, uh, there's an arm. Let me get the camera just to show you that arm in there. Um, if you need to remove these, there's two bolts that go into, ca into the captive uh, nut on the actual vent itself, um, and you can actually remove the vent. We don't need to do that, but you can just see we've got the old foam in here, which we're gonna remove. We can just pull the old adhesive off look from here. So working our way around. There we go. So I think we were fairly lucky with that. Now this one actually is original because it's not the aftermarket dual density. And I think if you compare it, it's very similar in thickness to the new one from XOR Trim. This is the new one from XOR Trim. That, that is actually a little bit thicker. I would say probably by about one mil. Not much. Um, as far as compression wise, feels about the same if I'm honest. So I'm gonna get some brake clean on a rag and just wipe the inside of this just to clean off any debris. So it's basically gonna go on this way around. So all you have to do is just slide it over the top. Now, this is definitely the easiest way to do it because you can take the vent flap off, but believe me, it's such a mission to get it off and get it back on again. It's just really not worth it. So we'll start with the top edge. Okay, so just tear it there, expose the top edge like that, and halfway down on the sides. Then we'll just locate that on that corner and just guide it in. Try not to stretch it because you're gonna make it thinner and you're gonna have too much left at the end. So I'm just very gently, I'm not pushing it on hard just yet, I'm just gonna get it into place. Okay, and then we just wanna tilt it up to remove the backing from the underside, like so. Get it in the corner first, then just guide it into place as close to that lip as possible. It's lovely and sticky. There we go. I think that's helped cleaning that with some uh, brake cleaner, to be honest. Right, we are in. So I'm just giving it a nice firm push again now. Okay, now we want a little bit of WD-40 on this linkage because it's a bit stiff, but do not put it on before you fit this in case you get some on the surface and it won't stick. So now we're all stuck. That's nice and lubed. Let's give it a wiggle. Oh, that flows better. And then we're just gonna line it up. We'll do one at a time. So we just push this back in. Still got the anti-seize on it, so it's going in nice and easy. And then literally, it's just a case of putting these little nuts back on again. It's all stuck down. Now what I'm gonna do is actually close it from the inside and see how it looks. So it's definitely compressed nicely. Still a bit of movement on there, but that looks nice and sealed. Okay, let's get stuck into the other one. Right, so our next job is gonna to be to replace the pretty basic washer jet on the front there that's a plastic piece. 
it's probably one of the worst jobs for me. I hate doing these. Um, they're either really easy or really hard. Now, the easiest way to actually fit one of these is to remove your dash top. Um, but you can do it without doing that. So what I'd say is if you're looking at doing some work on your dash area, maybe you're replacing your windscreen, you're just checking your vents, things like that. But if you want to remove this dash top, that's going to give you much better access um, to the nut, basically, that you can see on here. So you'll need some long nose pliers for this. Um, you can't get a socket onto it and you probably can't get a spanner on it either. So you need some vice grips or some long nose pliers. And what we're going to do, the first thing is remove the ashtray, which oh, it's still got some fag butts in it. Right, so that's gone. Now, I will show you some close up, but basically there is a rubber hose in here, which you can see I'm pulling up there. That is the piece of hose that attaches to a washer jet. So we have to basically pull that off first. And that is uh, easier said than done. Okay, so I'm going to go into here, grab that and try and pull it off. Wow, that was easy. Okay, we might be in luck here, you know, because that is a lovely soft tube. I think that might not be original, so that's great. Okay, so now we need very delicate tiny hands, which uh, I'm afraid I don't have. Uh, in here, you can feel there is a nut. Now, you want to break, which I've just done, off the tab that goes into the rubber. Now the reason you do that is because if you do that you may be able to get a socket on it. Um, you may. I think it's highly unlikely. So um, this is obviously our new one but imagine this is the old one. Um, I've broken off the end so that I can get closer to this nut um, that's inside. Now what I'm going to do is go outside the vehicle and I'm going to try and rotate that washer jet by pulling outwards and what that'll do is that should lock this nut against the bulkhead and it feels quite loose I'm thinking I might be able to wind that off. We're going to try and pull this outwards and unscrew it and that's coming loose look. Yep. Nut on the inside is being pulled up against the bulkhead and it's off look at that. I don't know what all the fuss was about to be honest. Right so <laughs> Um, so literally just undo your nut now. This is going to be the trickier bit. Because I'm on my own, ideally I'd have someone out there holding this so it doesn't wobble about when I'm trying to get this nut on. This is quite nice and heavy so that might actually sit in there. So all we've got to do is just pop it through the hole. Pretty simple. You have to do it completely blind. Okay, I'm in. I think I've got it threaded on. Can't be that easy, surely. That is though. Oh my god. Right, so I've now <laughs> this is just too too easy. So I've now got that in, I've got the nut on there. I just literally had it on there with my finger. It's difficult to explain, but I'm sure you can work it out. But just like slide it over the end of the shaft and try and hold the tip of the shaft with your thing with your forefinger while you do the nut up with your middle finger. I'm sure you all got the hang of that. Uh, we can just turn that a little bit more. Oh yes. Look at that. That is just so good. That's really solid on there. All right, little tiny bit of lube. That's it. And then that should slide on there nicely. That is on nice. So yeah, you just want to gently grab it and just slide it up onto that nipple. Now, although it looks like it's very low, I think what you'll find is when you're driving, that water's going to then rush up the windscreen and actually clear really nicely. Uh, plus, I do think, looking at that, our jet uh, washer jet pump is a little bit low on pressure that might be something we need to upgrade but yeah all in all I'm so incredibly surprised how easy that was so if yours is broken if you happen to damage it and you need to replace your washer jet 100% I would say replace it with one of these aftermarket heavy duty ones because it's a better distribution of water because you've got more water coming across the windscreen and when you're driving the wind pressure is going to flood that over the windscreen much better it's much more effective and it's just so much easier to fit trust me 
you'll be fitting one of those cheap plastic aftermarket ones. You will hate it. It is probably the worst job in the world for me. Uh, and you saw yourself just how easy that was. So definitely recommend 10 out of 10, get one of those, fit it to your Defender straight away. Okay, so we've got a couple more jobs to do. So here we have a generic uh, aluminium gear knob set from Britpart, a nicely finished bit of kit to be fair. And inside you'll see two very shiny gear knobs. Now, these look great. Uh, you can see here, um, they've got the etching. So they're machined on the inside. I don't know if that's a casting or what, but anyway, it's got a recess in there where the actual numbers of the gears are. And I don't mind the sort of subtle approach, but I thought it might be interesting to do something a little bit different. Now, um, I don't know what this is officially called, but I call it puddle painting. And that is because we're gonna be painting the recesses in here and then cleaning it off. So we've actually given ourselves a more defined, detailed print. So you've got a couple of options really to color these in. Now, um, you can use ideally some sort of humbral or a sort of Airfix model style paint, uh, enamel paint and a brush and just brush it on and then we use the same technique to remove the excess in a minute. Or you could use some touch-up paint. So I've got this uh, touch-up paint from Temu online. It cost me £1.34. It's probably gonna be terrible, but it is at the end of the day just black touch-up paint. So I should just be able to give this a bit of a shake. The trick to this is to paint it on thick enough for it to fill the well of the uh, machined part in there. Um, because you can see it's recessed by about half a mil, maybe, if that, if that's picking up. So that's what you wanna basically be filling that. Um, now you need to let it go off just enough so that when you use some brake cleaner or thinners to wipe off the excess, it doesn't remove what's in there. Now let's see if it will actually work. So we're gonna use our brush here. And you don't have to be you know, super duper accurate because all you're trying to do is fill that. So keep adding it. You can see where it's filling up. You don't want to use a microfiber cloth like this because you've got lots of little prickly bits that might go in. You need to use something that's completely flat like a kitchen roll. So I'm folding the kitchen roll up like so, and I'm literally just gonna soak it and then wipe it gently across. So I've got some uh, brake cleaner here. And then we'll just go glide across the top. Oh wow, look at that. So, there. Now, if you go too much, you start pulling it out, but there we go, look. So, let's do the other one. So, what do you think? I think that looks a lot better, personally. Um, I wish I'd thought about doing the colors. I wonder if you could use nail varnish. I bet you could, you know, I've got some upstairs. Well, I haven't, my other half has. Nearly gave it away there. But let's get these in the Defender now because it's a really hot day and they will bake off a treat. Just to be clear, when you buy these Britpark gear knobs, uh, they don't come with coloured numericals on them. Uh, that is obviously something you have to do yourself, which I've just shown you. You can do it in any colour and, you know, really you get to customise them just as you want. Um, you could also, you've also got this rim around the outside here, look, you've got, uh, which mimics the original. Uh, you could put that in a colour as well. Again, you know, it's all up to you. You can do whatever you like, um, but it's just a really nice way of customising it and just making it look a little bit more detailed because otherwise it's just a big lump of silver. So they've got a thread on the inside which correlates with the threads on the actual gear stick. Now the only issue you're going to come across is, in my experience, winding them on to a point where they're tight and actually reading the right way. So let's see how we get on. There is a little trick I can tell you uh, as well just to sort of get you uh, covered. So out of the factory, these would have been threaded on and a rubber bush would have gone inside them. But because these are aftermarket, they've got no thread in the actual knob itself. You can see there, look, well you can't, but there's nothing in there. If I compare that to the, the new aluminium ones we're gonna fit, you can see the hole is a lot smaller. So this rubber bush on the actual arm itself here, that's gonna to have to come off. So I'm gonna use some mole grips. 
there we go. Uh, or you could cut it off, it's up to you. Now all we need to do is thread this on. So it should just thread straight onto the end there, which it does. But where she stops, nobody knows. Right, now, if you're lucky, you'll be able to tighten it up enough for it to be positioned. Oh, look at that. Now, there, we're out of luck. So, I don't know if you can see that, but that's actually not how I want it. It's facing me here. Um, but when it's tight, uh, it's off center, which is no good for us. We need that to be um, sort of horizontal or vertical, if you like. So we're gonna put some thread lock on there with my thread lock chapstick that I recommend that everybody has. Then we're gonna use a little piece of this rubber that we took off. We're gonna snip it and make a compression spacer, basically. We've got this piece here, okay, that I'm gonna put in. Let's just get that pushed down with my pliers. I'm gonna put one little tiny bit more in there, just because I think it'll need it. And you can always keep doing this until you get it right. It's a bit of a lengthy process, but do you know what? It'll look right and it'll stay looking right. So let's see if we've gauged that right. What we're hoping to do is get it to compress enough that I can still turn it. It's getting tight now. I reckon get one more turn on there. No, get two on there. Yep, this is good. Might get one more. Yep, look at that. Right. So that is not loose and we've got thread lock on there. So I'll make sure I'm perfectly happy with that. Wow, that looks so good. So what we've done is we've used a combination of those um, rubber bits and pieces. If you don't have rubber bushes on yours when you take them off, just get yourself uh, an old bit of rubber or an old eraser off the top of a pencil, anything like that that's got a bit of give in it, but it's quite thick, uh, quite sturdy. And there we have our top gear knob. Yeah, I just think they look so much better like that. There's that one, and, he, and this one looks even better. Look at that. So, really pleased, really cheap and easy solution. So that is another job done. The last job we're gonna to do today is re-trim uh, the door card or refit the door card trim on the door. And we're gonna do that uh, by using some new fixings. So we're gonna use one of the kits that are supplied by LR Parts. And rather than mess about and just buy the individual parts you need, they do a kit which saves you quite a bit of money. So you, you're probably better off just investing in that whole kit and then you know you've replaced everything. Now a lot of it, they're all plastic parts, so it's an inexpensive kit to buy, but it basically it replaces this push button um, piece here, the uh, channel guide that mounts onto the door that it uses, and then also the surround that goes on the door card itself. Not only that, but you get all the new fixings uh, that you'll need, because obviously when we took the door card off, most of these did break. So you get a full complement of those, and uh, it's quite an easy job to be fair. Um, it's just a few screws to undo in the right order, and I'll show you how to do it right now. So inside the door itself, you've got the uh, all the mechanisms that are linked by these rods. Though they're, they're quite fragile, you don't want to be messing about them too much. You won't be able to release the rod from this piece of plastic, this push button here, until you've got it off the door. So it's just simply two uh, screws that attach the, the guide into the door. So we need to take those off first. So now we've got this piece is free, we can actually just rotate this. Uh, can you see that? Yep. So there's a little bar here. We're going to rotate that, lift it up and off. So if you didn't see the video where we actually changed our hinges on the vehicle, uh, it's definitely worth looking at that quickly now. And I'll put the link up top there so you can check it out and in the description because you'll want to know how to actually remove all these door parts. So the door handles and everything, and it's all covered in that video. So that pops off and then we can just take the winder off. And that's basically the door bare now. Everything else can go on after. Basically in the kit, you do get a full set of the sort of um, location plastic lugs that go into the door. Um, I don't really think these need replacing. Uh, none of mine look broken. So I'm quite happy to leave all of those in place, but it's good to have that packet as a spare. We've then got the guide, which I mentioned before. So that's something we do need. We've also got a new button, which again, we do need. Some additional trim clips. These go on the uh, outside of the 
um, door card to actually locate it. And then you also get all of these fitting clips. Now these are probably the most important uh, bits we're gonna need uh, because they pretty much all broke. So again, these are the ones that you're gonna need. So when you've got your clip, you'll see you've just got these two little hooks that need to hook under here and then go on. So that's basically hooked on at the bottom and then you secure it at the top underneath that piece. And you can see what I mean about leaving a bit of dirt on there. That means I can just get it lined up to where it was before. Now remember, just as you did when you took it off, you're gonna to have to thread the bar through first before you reattach it to the door. So we've got our guide there that's going to sit on there like that. This will drop inside and then we're going to find our bar which did fall down and that goes in from the back forwards. All of these yellow points need a fixing so there's one that survived being removed. Um, there's one that broke during removal. So we just need to remove the, uh, the broken bits uh, and then unfortunately we've got one here that is actually broken off. Um, now we do repair for those, unfortunately I've not got one with me. And you can just see down here as well, that one there is actually uh, half broken, so that could do the repair. We're going to fit it now today anyway, but then I think we're going to have to come back at a later date and then show you how the repair kit works. I haven't got the gear today, but we'll get it on and then we can look at that in a future episode. This is one of the clips and that is got a little aperture open on there and that slides onto the clip and then locates into position. Okay, there are my bottom ones. Okay, now don't worry about the hinge side because there's none on there. Get these ones in place. Okay, then push the bottom ones in a little bit. So I've got my side, the bottom, now I can line the top ones up. And then just firmly squeeze it. Like so. And we're in. So we just literally pop it in there. And then that pin in the middle needs to be tapped in. I've got a dead blow hammer here. So just make sure the the clips firmly into the into the door itself just tap it and that will basically expand as it goes in and we've got one in this far corner here as well so this isn't the standard door handle but it's uh, it's a nice little upgrade and if you watch the video that we did previously i'll put it in the description above again um, you'll notice that i actually flipped the door handle around because i thought that was a bit ugly that side i like that side better so we've got that side showing um, we're now going to fit our shroud here for the uh, door. Now that's actually the wrong one. So the reason it's wrong is because you can see the hole in it is at the bottom and it should be at the top when I slide it on. So put your screw in, put your thumb on the screw itself and then slide that over the handle and in. You have to open the door handle a little bit to get the screw in. So that goes on first. It's got two little flat pieces here that go in, locate into the door, so you'll know which way around. Fit the clip like I have there fully in, because what'll happen is you can just see right in the middle there, because that is shaped, that'll push the pin out and locate. So you haven't got to worry about pushing that um, clip back into position. So we should be able to just do that straight on. Let's have a look. There we go. So you've got a little clip on the top there and that slides in the groove. Now, you have to be a little bit brutal and what I would say is get some WD-40 just in case. Now these might be better, but I just know from previous experience that they can stick. I haven't fitted one for a while, so they might have improved the design. Got two little uh, nubs here that will locate into the housing once it's in place. So literally, there we go. Really good. Perfect. That went far better than I expected. Uh, there was a couple of jobs in there that um, normally 
I find a bit of a challenge. Certainly that washer jet on the uh, on the front on the bulkhead there, that was super easy. And I think most of that is to do with the fact that that's so well CNC machined, that part, it just went on a treat. Um, the gear knobs, I'm really happy with. I've never done that before, but I've always wanted to. And now I've done it in black, I'm really keen to sort of play around with a few different colors just to sort of make it really custom. Um, so I'm gonna try and break out some uh, yellow and red nail varnish and try that on another set just to see how that looks and I'll give you some feedback on that but I think you can play around with that and get some really good results and that's a pretty affordable upgrade and it just really smartens up the interior. Really pleased that I've got the door cards on again now. Um, that's uh, been waiting to happen for a long time, been trying to get those door cards on, but they're all in place now, really pleased with how they've gone on. That fitting kit is really a lot better than they used to be. So as you know, I used to build these Land Rovers defenders and refurbish them for a living. And there was a few little things like that washer jet and like those, uh, those locking button uh, replacement bits that were just so badly made, they just weren't worth fitting. But I'm pleased to say now that is definitely a well worth uh, an upgrade. And the fact that it comes in a complete kit with all the little fixings, so you know that when you start the job you've got everything you need whether you use it or not it's still very inexpensive so again a really top bit of kit now the vent flaps went on a tree and I want I've been wanting to do that for a while because I do think that's where some of our water ingress is coming in but I had spoken to Exmoor Trim they were telling me that they had some of those in production uh, prototypes and they wanted me to try them out so I've got them on now I'm going to keep an eye on them and sort of play around with them open the vents close the vents get some water in there see what happens and then just give them some feedback but they look like a really good product but if you're desperate for them now, the ones that are available are brilliant, they're super inexpensive, and they just will do a good job of keeping the moisture out. If you've got a really early Land Rover 90 or 110, they'll have a rubber gasket on there, and that does perish really badly, goes hard, and that won't keep any water out. So you can still just peel those off and replace them with the foam gaskets, no problem at all. But I'll keep you posted on how well those ones from Exmoor Trim have done. So yeah, I think I've been really lucky. Maybe it's the hat, maybe I should wear that a little bit more often to get a bit of luck on the jobs that I do. But I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and I'll catch you on the next one.